It's another Thunder Thursday on News OK Live. I'm Mike Sherman, sports editor, here with our Thunder coverage team of Darnell Mayberry, Jenny Carlson, and John Rohde to talk about the NBA trade deadline, which just passed. And when it passed, there's some news with the Thunder. Ronnie Brewer, an elite defender, comes from the New York Knicks to the Thunder. And Eric Maynard, backup point guard, whose time in Oklahoma City has passed, has moved on to the Portland Trailblazers. Darnell Mayberry, let's start with Ronnie Brewer. What does his acquisition do for the Thunder? Nick Collison and, and, and Kevin Martin are the only two guys off that bench that really have experience and, uh, and, and can be relied upon. And uh, This gives you another guy. So it, it, Brody has been asking the question uh, pretty much all season. Uh, do you need that eighth guy? Do you need to get to nine deep? I think this at least helps them get eight deep. John, what do you think of the deal? You like it? Well, in the uh, main event on Monday, uh, we said uh, five reasons that the Thunder would make a trade. One of them was a defensive stopper on the perimeter. Same size as Tabo, about 10 to 15 pounds heavier. Well, Tabo's 6'7", 215. Brewer's 6'7", 225. So, and he's proven, and he, was pr he proved himself in Utah. He comes at the right price. Uh, I like it. Why not? Jenny, uh, Ronnie Brewer, uh, his background, of course, John alluded to, 14th uh, pick overall, uh, went to Utah in 2006, a couple of years there, played in Memphis, played two seasons in Chicago, a team really sort of known for its uh, defensive identity. And then this year, uh, started 34 games for the Knicks, knocked out of the starting lineup because uh, he fell into a shooting slump. Not a great shooter, but again, uh, comes here with a, a reputation as an elite defender. How does he fit? Well, I think the fact that he maybe doesn't shoot it that well is just fine. I don't think the Thunder needs him to shoot uh, a ton. I think they need him to play some defense and uh, maybe be able to spell Tabo Cephalosha or play alongside him. Um, you know, when you look at uh, matchups like they've struggled with against the Heat, just having enough bodies out there to handle um, teams that have, you know, more athleticism, I think he's a guy that can really help to maybe, uh, you know, mitigate some of those situations I, you know i'm not here to suggest that he can um you know take care of lebron james by himself i don't know if anybody can do that but in a situation like that he has to you have to at least think he'll be able to help um be able to spell a guy like tabo they can they can switch off on him uh kevin durant get some time on a guy like lebron so uh, i like it i i think the fact that maybe he's he's not an offensive guy first uh just fine you know if he can break out of that slump and maybe hit a shot every now and again great but if he can play some defense i think that's where the thunder could really uh really use his help the thunder thursday of course is sponsored by our good friends at advent heat air and plumbing on call 24 7 for thunder fans guys uh looking at sam presti's deadline deals this is uh sort of the third substantial one in oklahoma city each time uh it's been a defensive deal. Tabo Cephalosha uh, was one of his first. He traded a, a future first round pick that turned into Taj Gibson. Uh, he got Kendrick Perkins in that blockbuster deal. It's a Jeff Green and Nanai Kerstich to Boston. Now this Ronnie Brewer. Jenny, uh, we spent a lot of time alluding to the idea of who's going to guard LeBron James. Last night, the question was who's going to guard James Harden went off for 46 uh, points. Uh, one of the, you know, a career high. Seems like Ronnie Brewer might have come in handy there. Uh, do you see this as uh, 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 gives Scott Brooks an ability to sort of play small a lot more and not run the wheels off of Tabo Cephalosha? Well, you'd sure think so. I mean, I, I don't, Scott Brooks, for whatever reason, he has seemed averse to going small, um, even when uh, it looks like they really need to go small. So, if he's not going to use him, um, obviously it becomes a, a trade that w or a deal that maybe wasn't worth doing. But um, if he's willing to use him uh, and, and you know maybe uh, use him in concert with some of those other guys, I think it could really be a nice deal. And yeah, I mean I think I think you're right about maybe not having to rely on Tabo uh, quite so much. But at the same time, there have been games when I thought they didn't play Tabo enough. So um, you know hopefully they can. Yeah, work him into the rotation and have him be helpful. I think he can be helpful. 
Um, but as we've seen, Scott Brooks, for whatever reason, sometimes doesn't want to go small. So he's, it, it, it strikes me that maybe this is a step in that direction. Otherwise, why would you make this deal? It seems a little bit peculiar to do it if you, um, if you don't think you're going to play a little bit of a, a small ball every now and again. Darnell, what is the why behind the why on this deal? Does it, does it allow, does it give Brooks the uh, ability to play small more with a, a perimeter defender on the court at all times? Did you just say the why behind the why? I did. <laughs> I'm not sure I know what that means. Uh, can you repeat why? the question? Yeah, I, I mean, what, what is the big reason why they made this deal? Uh, is it, could it be that this allows them to play small more often and always have an elite <clears throat> perimeter defender on the court? I mean, I just, you know, you can always look ahead and, and say, you know, Miami plays small and, and uh, you know, that LeBron James fellow is tough to guard. This gives them another defender to throw at him. I just think it's a, it's a cheap, you know, relatively cheap deal and it doesn't, doesn't cost them anything but a second round pick. So uh, why not go out there and, uh, you know, get a proven guy, as Rody said, and and uh, try to shore up your bench, your second unit. So to me, it's it's almost... Uh, a no-brainer type deal because, you know, it helps you uh, in the short term and, and possibly in the long term as well. John, uh, is this a trade that makes the Thunder better or is this sort of uh, a flyer? Better, because here's why I think. Now you have uh, Russell starting, Reggie backing him up. Tabo, you now have a clear backup for him. Brewer will replace Tabo. It simplifies things and they can do a little three-man money game when they go small and, and Durant moves to the four. But this, if and with what we saw a little bit last night and lately, maybe they can take Tabo off the best offensive player on the other team, sick Brewer on him, and maybe Tabo can concentrate a little bit more on offense. So I think it kind of uh, frees up a few possibilities here. Let's go back to you, John, and, and take some questions off the News OK Live page. What's a trade exception? Trade exception is a, is a monetary, well, Darnell's better at this than I am, but a monetary value attached to a player, I believe, with, with Maynard, it was $2.5 million. Uh, and uh, so they can get a player of that worth or less and not have it count against the cap. Is that close to being right, Darnell? Yeah, Darnell, elaborate. I think, you, I think you hit the nail on the head. It's basically, uh, it's, it's called officially a non-simultaneous trade. So basically, Portland sends a trade exception hypothetically to or the theoretically to Oklahoma City for the amount of 2.5 million dollars you can use that teams that are over the salary cap uh, and unable to match salaries uh, can use that trade exception to acquire a different player in a trade so uh, thus the non simultaneous aspect of it uh, you can complete the trade at a later date they give you the NBA gives you up to a year to complete that trade. Uh, so the Thunder now has uh, up to February 21st of 2014 to use that $2.5 million trade exception. So uh, not only were, were the Thunder busy on this deadline, but they could also be busy next year at the deadline as well using that trade exception, which uh, I think is one of probably the untold stories of this trade right now is because Eric Manor was going to leave in all likelihood in free agency. Uh, he, he was squeezed out of the rotation. He wasn't right after that ACL injury. Reggie Jackson became the backup. Um, so he probably was not going to be re-signed. If they didn't make this trade today, they would have lost Eric Maynard in July in free agency and not been able to get anything back for him. Now it's basically like you have the commodity of an Eric Maynard at his salary cap number for an additional year, uh, and now you can have another asset going forward. Uh, for another calendar year. So I think that's probably one of the most underrated aspects of this trade. Uh, it doesn't look great on paper when you say what's a trade exception, especially if you don't know what it is. But I think that's especially the way that Sam Presti and his staff have been known to use these things in the past could work out being real well for the Thunder. Say, hey, Darnell, real, real you quick, Darnell, is that, does that new player, can he not exceed the 2.5? No, he has to fit in that 2.5 window. See, Darnell, okay. you answered the why behind the why before I even had to ask it about the Eric Maynard trade. Of course, you're talking about the deal that sent Eric Maynard, uh, the reserve guard for the Thunder, uh, to the Portland Trailblazers. Darnell, this does leave the, 
the, the uh, Thunder sort of in a, a situation where they don't have that fail safe at backup point guard, backup, backup point guard. Is it now just Reggie Jackson's job uh, to go? And do they need to be looking elsewhere, maybe? To hello, Derek Fisher, for, for another point guard. I love Derek Fisher, uh, you know, professionally, personally. But if he comes back, there's a chance we don't see Tavo Cephalosha or Ronnie Brewer in the playoffs. So uh, let's hope that Derek Fisher is not the answer uh, to the Thunder's third-string point guard need. So uh, I think they're definitely going to explore some options. Uh, and, you know, most teams like to have three point guards just for insurance. You know, Reggie Jackson has been up and down. He's been better of late. But I think you'd still like to get someone with a steady hand back there and just in case something happens. And I think uh, the way the Thunder has operated in the past, you know, we've seen them go out and get Chucky Atkins, uh, guys like that, Sean Livingston. They've tried to shore up their point guard uh, situation since they've been in town. And I think this will be no different. We'll see them go out there and get someone before the playoffs start. Jenny, are there any sort of – looking at what the Thunder could have had, should have had, are there any sort of regrets or, or things that you look at that uh, maybe you thought the Thunder should have addressed at the deadline? Well, you know, I, I think that we're seeing, you know, a lot of hesitation amongst a lot of teams to do anything big. You know, where there just wasn't that blockbuster or those several blockbuster deals like we've seen in years past at the trade deadline. And uh, we had a really uh, interesting story in the paper today, an AP story that, Sort of outlined, you know, the fact that the CBA has um, really made a lot of teams think twice about things. And, and if, it's, if, if teams like Miami and, and New York and those sorts of teams are thinking twice, you know, the Thunder have to be, you know, double and triple checking the bottom line with the CBA. You don't want to be paying luxury tax in Oklahoma City. But, um, you know, I, I, to me, the thing that I would have I would have liked to have seen them gone out and get is low, po low post scoring. Um, I just think more and more, the more I've watched uh, these games with the Heat, you know, if that is the matchup um, that they're to, to come down to um, potentially in the NBA Finals, either this year or next year, I, you know, I just think they've got to figure out some way to um, bust the Heat out of that small lineup, and they just don't have the interior scoring right now. Maybe it develops amongst the guys that they currently have. Maybe that become Serge Ibaka at some point, but as of right now, they don't have it. And so, uh, you know, I was hopeful maybe a low post score could have been acquired, but um, um, like a lot of teams, the Thunder just didn't go out and make those big deals this year. Darnell, let's go back to you on this one. Uh, of course, the Mainer trade, they did get uh, the trade exception, but every NBA trade, uh, there has to be a player coming back or, or a pick. Uh, and in this case, it sounds like they got a guy uh, uh, nicknamed the Greek Lightning. Is that right? And have you had time to Google him up or figure out how to pronounce his name? No, I don't know anything about him. I can't help anybody there. Sorry. Uh, apparently, they uh, acquired a, a, play, a Greek player. Uh, I'm going to try at his, uh, the pronunciation of his name. Uh, 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 Giorgio's Prin Princias. And yeah, great pizza. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, another curiosity, another, is he a stash? Is he a guy just to make it work? Presti's acquired these kind of guys before. Uh, John, let's talk about Presti at the, at the deadline and Presti's trades. It seems like, while, while of course he did make a huge splash with the Harden trade and a huge splash uh, sending Jeff Green to Boston for Kendrick Perkins, many, many of his trades are sort of like this. Uh, they don't make big headlines, they exchange exceptions and second round picks and they sort of surf along the bottom yet they turn out pretty good is this got a potential to be another one of his steals oh sure i think so i don't think it's along the lines of tabo but it's a similar player and darnell i, I think darnell said they gave up a second round pick the, the charlotte's second round pick no By the way, the thunder still has three first rounders one of them could be a lottery pick so he didn't even forfeit any of those guys i think it's a good darnell and i were talking everybody was talking if it something was going to happen with Maynor, and and it wouldn't create many waves, this creates a few ripples, nothing great, but the big splash that the uh, the Jefferson trade or the Gortat trade would have involved Perk, and I just don't see anybody wanting him because they can't amnesty him. The only team that can amnesty Perk is Oklahoma City, so uh, that was unrealistic and unlikely, and they always involved West teams, and and that just doesn't pan out, and rarely does. So 
I think under the circumstances, Darnell, they still got three first rounders. This is good stuff, I think. Yeah, and let me let me correct something you said. It was not the Charlotte. I don't. I, I think oh, I'm heard you right. It was not the Charlotte Bobcats pick, which is also extremely important because that's probably going to be the 31st pick in the draft. Uh, you know, the first pick outside of the first round. Uh, they they gave up their own second round pick in next year's draft. So, I mean, you're probably talking about the 60th pick in the draft or maybe, you know, the 58th or 59th pick. So to get a guy like Ronnie Brewer, and I I know a lot of people in Oklahoma City probably aren't too familiar with him, but he's basically Tybo Cephalosha. Uh, If you like what Tybo Cephalosha brings defensively, you're going to love Ronnie Brewer. He's another guy who's going to hustle, dive on the floor for loose balls, make the opponent – uh, have a have a have an off shooting night and and really just give them fit. So you got a great player defensively uh, for basically the 58th, 59th, 60th pick in next year's draft. So I think that's a pretty good steal. Jenny, uh, Presti's deals. Uh, you know, of course, we talked about some of the the low level deals he's made. A lot of times when he's made deals like this, he was also uh, trying to cut salary. Uh, in this case. Uh, Salary concerns were a big deal, uh, but the big, you know, the big thing that John alluded to, he talked about Kendrick Perkins. There was, there was a rumor out there yesterday that the Thunder was going to try to send, or there was, was in talks with Portland to send Perkins to the desert and get Gortat back. Uh, there's some expression of regret among some Thunder fans that that didn't happen. Uh, what John said, it doesn't quite ring true. Do you think that was a deal that really would have helped the Thunder? You know, I think as far as inside scoring, that thing that I was most uh, hopeful they could get, low post post score, yeah, I mean, he's a guy that it sounded like uh, it might have been a possibility to really help in that way. So, um, you know, I'm I'm with some fans on that. You know, I don't don't know if the Suns would have been willing to pull pull the trigger on that because, like John said, the amnesty situation, Um, what the Suns would have had to have uh, uh, been willing to part with or, you know, just cut away. Uh, So maybe they weren't willing ultimately to do the deal. But, uh, you know, obviously um, it seems like the Suns were in a mood to to deal. They did a deal last night with the Rockets uh, and the Kings. And so um, they were doing some things and and trading some guys that maybe they didn't want to trade necessarily. Thomas Robinson was, um, or no, I'm sorry, that was the, that was the Kings. I'm, forgetting who's who's where now but uh, the Suns were in a mood to deal so um, you know maybe that was talked about and maybe it just uh, maybe it just didn't pan out but obviously Gortat would have helped in, in some of the ways I was hopeful for you're listening to the Thunder Thursday hangout on News OK Live uh, this is the NBA trade deadline uh, special and John let's talk about the uh, deals that did get made uh, elsewhere and do you see any out there that really sort of change things as uh, as far as a playoff picture? Not not really. I, 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 the Rondo thing, it wouldn't make sense for for uh, the team that got him to do it because it's an Eric Maynard knee injury, Derek Rose, all the question marks. He was available according to the Celtics, but that's that's just stupid on both parts, really. And the Lakers, they're a mess. I don't know. I, they're stuck with Howard. Cupcheck's not about to admit he made a mistake. So Howard's going to finish the year there, obviously. Real quick, in its simplest form, Sherm, Brewer was a number 14 overall pick, a first-round pick in 2006. Now the Thunder gave away a second-round pick, the 58th overall pick around there. They just got a, a first-round lottery pick for the number 20, for the number 58 pick, if you just cut it down to there. And he's 27 years old, and he knows the league, and he's started 301 games. How can this not be worth a shot? It sounds, now that you say it that way, it sounds better all the time, John. Darnell, do you, uh, did you see any other deals out there that you think make a, made a difference at the deadline? Yeah, they should have went and got Jermaine O'Neal. I said I this still last love that trade. I love I that. I said it last week. I mean, if you go out and get Jermaine, now picture Jermaine O'Neal with what you just did. Uh, ship, uh, you know, Daniel Orton and then maybe a second round pick or something, you know, maybe. Maybe you don't even need to get a second-round pick. They they might just dump him anyway uh, and waive him, agree to a buyout or something out there in Phoenix. If you get Jermaine O'Neal with Reggie Jackson, Kevin Martin, Nick Collison, and and, uh, and, and Ronnie Brewer, then you got yourself a second string uh, to complement what you have in in the starting five. And I think this team is a lot more dangerous going into the playoffs, and you can actually mix and match and do some things 
a little bit better than maybe you could last year. I'll throw this out to you guys, and whoever uh, has feel strongest about it, take the question. Last year, the deadline came and went, and the Thunder stood pat. A couple days later, after Derek Fisher had been traded to Houston for Jordan Hill and then cut, the Thunder used an open roster spot to pick him up. There's an open roster spot. Is that correct? Don't they yeah, still have an opening on the roster? Room. Could that still not happen? Well, there's no, there's no money with, uh, no room with the money. They're too, too close to the tax level. I see what you're saying, but they'd have to get rid of somebody's salary to get up, get a new one. So it'd be a, a swap. I don't, I'm not saying nothing would happen, but in that right there now, they're within like 200,000 of the tax level. Yeah, but they actually saved a little bit of money uh, getting rid of Maynard's almost two and a half million dollar deal and, and bringing in Ronnie Brewer's, you know, eight hundred fifty thousand dollar deal. So. Uh, they, they save a, a chunk of coin there, so they have a little bit more room, but still uh, it's tricky. Uh, it, it's less than a million dollars, like you said, probably less than $500,000. So uh, it'll be tough. It'll be could tough. They, do you think they could use the exception as quickly as a month from now? Could they use it this, this season? They could, but do you envision that? No, you can't use it to sign a free agent. You can only use it to trade for a player. So Sorry. Okay. Uh, you know, that's an important distinction. I'm glad you brought that up. A good conversation point this uh, trade deadline is for the Oklahoma City Thunder, which last night went to Houston and laid an egg. Darnell, well, up uh, double digits with seven minutes, with still five minutes left, and uh, Ronnie Brewer couldn't get there soon enough. James Harden lit him up for a career high. Darnell, what, what if any, was the lesson from that game? It seemed to me you seem to be saying that the Thunder played hero ball while the hero was actually wearing uh, Rockets white and red. Well, I mean, I think the lesson, plain and simple, is that the Thunder needs to get back to its defensive ways. Um, you know, 105 points they've given up in the last 10 road games, 45% shooting. These numbers are becoming ridiculous, what the Thunder is yielding in road games. And when you, when you do that consistently, it's a problem. Nobody really wants to just accept it and own it. Uh, Scott Brooks came as close as he has all season to doing that last night uh, when he said it's been a problem for a while now. Uh, but somebody's got to step up and, and, and hold this team accountable and hold each other accountable. They've got to they've got to find a way to get out of this funk defensively because uh, they're not giving themselves much of a chance to win on the road. They were up 15 or 14 points with seven and a half minutes to go, and they gave up 29 points in the final seven and a half minutes. That's that's incredible. Uh, and this team always talks about it, prides itself as a defensive team. Uh, who are they kidding? You know, when you give up 29 points in seven and a half minutes. Jenny, is this just a, a, a post all-star break lull or an all-star break lull that started before and is carrying after? Or is this, uh, is this a flashing light on the dashboard? Well, I mean, I think that it, it's definitely safe to say that this team's in a, in a slump right now. I mean, last 10 games are five and five. So I think you can safely say that there's a bit of a slump. But at the same time, I think this is the kind of thing that you see from time to time during an 82 game you know, season last year. Remember, we were on that shortened uh, schedule. Every game was, uh, you know, the importance was raised. And um, it, it, I just don't think you saw teams quite have that slide because it was um, it was such a rapid fire succession of games and, and, and so important were those games. But now longer season, I think you tend to have some lulls and I think this is a lull right now. I, I don't think it's disastrous, but obviously they got to start playing better and they're just, uh, they're not, they're not playing great ball right now. They got to uh, figure it out. Minnesota comes to town on Friday. The Bulls are in on Sunday. Uh, it'd be a great time to, to get a little winning streak started at home because right now, um, it seems like on the road they're definitely struggling, and, and so they're going to need to win those home games to um, to stay towards the top of the Western Conference standings. A great test for the Thunder. It's a new defense when J.J. Barea comes to town on, on Friday, and then on Sunday a great opportunity to talk to Bulls coaches about the impact of Ronnie Brewer when the Bulls come to town. John, we'll, we'll end this uh, with you because I know you guys got phone calls to make, stories to write. Uh, here's my question. Right now, what's the bigger concern for the Thunder on the offensive end or the defensive end? And I ask that question because still at the end of the games, it doesn't seem to be that the Thunder has a great plan other than go one-on-one. -on -one. Which, which side of it do you think is a bigger concern? 
Well, they're still leading the league in scoring, I believe, and and it's defense. And we got the answer today. Somebody's flying in from New York tonight, and and that shows me that the Thunder goes, yeah, we got some issues on defense. We need some proven people. Uh, I don't know how to tell Darnell this. I think his boy DeAndre just went one more seat to the left because uh, I, I can't imagine uh, DeAndre playing more than uh, Brewer, but maybe DeAndre's that good. What about it, Darnell? Let's, uh, let's go one question over time. What does this do to DeAndre Liggins? He's crying. What'd you say? He's flat out crying. What'd you say? He's crying, yeah. He's verklempt. Can't speak. Yeah, uh, it, it squeezes him out of the rotation. Like I said, Scott Brooks was only really playing seven guys, you know, maybe eight with a shame to beat. DeAndre Liggins was kind of in and out of the lineup as it was. And, you know, with Ronnie Brewer here, he's, he started 301 career games uh, in his six-and-a-half-year career. So it squeezes DeAndre Liggins out of the rotation, and that's sad to see. I mean, but the guy's a hard worker. Hopefully he can stick around and – and, uh, you know, Tabo Cephalosha is up after next season. So we'll see what happens. Maybe he's, you know, people have mentioned him as Tabo Cephalosha's eventual replacement. I think that's a long way off. But uh, I don't think we've seen the end of DeAndre Liggins. Thanks, guys. That's all for this edition of the Thunder Thursday Hangout on News OK Live. But you can stay with the best team anywhere every day at News OK and every morning in the Oklahoman. A reminder that Thunder Thursdays are sponsored by our good friends at Advent Heat, Air, and Plumbing. On call 24-7 for Thunder fans.